，假设新冠做不了疫苗，会怎么样？冠状病毒啊，它引起什么样的免疫反应呢？我们这次为什么是是肺炎？ Hope is born of uncertainty. The future is what we make it. The challenge was equitable distribution of vaccines, not only to the higher-income countries, but also to the rest of the world. From hidden laboratories in China's capital to high-tech factories in a globalized world. This is seen by the brain. This side is seen by the brain. We are at a crossroads in our fight against disease. And people said, wow, we have almost discovered entire new world for the technology in life science. The vaccine has to be in P3 in the test. We haven't seen this car before. This is the first vaccine for the Chinese vaccine. Now, new tools are changing how we fight. But change alone is not victory. 如果当你这个疫苗需要在一个非常低的低温状态下去储存的话，你怎么办？这三种疫苗如果都成功，是全世界的福音；如果三个都失败，那就是灾难。那么，随着中国这些公共卫生体系的不断壮大，融入到世界卫生组织的这样的一个这个全球框架内来去贡献我们的力量。I think health and medicine is not a competition; it is a collaboration. This is an era of great and sudden change, a time of uncertainty and scientific fact, the beginning of a remarkable journey to an age known as Generation Vax. On a big road, which will lead you to a big world. 天下为公 The world will benefit from your contribution. That's the philosophy of Confucius, 2,500 years ago. Yeah. I think uh, the incentives for scientific research are mainly two aspects. One is what we call the uh, curiosity-driven approach, and the other is the challenge-driven approach. Why the concerns about human life? That's the responsibility-driven approach as well, because infectious diseases don't respect the borders. They don't respect ethnic groups. The spectacle of the International Rugby Sevens in Hong Kong. A world opened up after a global pandemic. But this event in China's most international city is evidence of a fundamental shift in our world. Today, over 6 billion people, the majority of Earth's population, has been vaccinated against COVID-19. Global vaccine passports are a thing. Yearly vaccinations are as well. Behind all of this lies the specter of future outbreaks and the story of vaccines. Who knows when the next coronavirus will make a jump into humans and potentially cause another global pandemic? It could be in the next few years. It, it, it could take another 100 years until that happens again. The experience in the COVID pandemic tells us we've got to be ready. Plague, dealing with disease, the first of human right is life. The majority of people survive. That's the most important thing. The most recent black death, right? Including 100 years ago, the Spanish flu, and so on, 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 死亡。西班牙大流感是全球死了多少人？其实，连我们自己都没有经历过这样一个，就是公共卫生的事件。一旦传染病流行的时候，疫苗一定是紧缺的。OK， 理解吗？疫苗一定是紧缺的
在二零二零年之前，不管是我们中国的老百姓和全世界的老百姓，对疫苗的关注度都没那么高。From the moment we learned of them, coronaviruses have been trouble. They have an astonishing ability to quickly mutate and cause deadly respiratory diseases in humans. Before COVID, there had never been a successful vaccine to counter their spread. In those dark days in 2020, a few talented researchers was all that stood between us and imminent disaster. I first heard the information in 2019, the year of 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 2019, 但是很快我得到了信息，它不是 SARS， 它是另外一种病毒，新型冠状病毒。我的老家在四川，我要回家去看我母亲，加上快过春节了，所以我当时到机场的时候，我看到已经大概有些人戴口罩了，这个是不是那么严重了？然后我就给我的主管领导打电话。我说主任，我说我刚请完假，要我回来吗？两个字，回来。我们有一位领导就说了，好像发现了可能是传染病的这样一个病，那个测序的结果呢，就 like SARS， 有点像那个 SARS 病毒。我就马上就在那会场上，我就偷偷打电话，就给我们实验室的处长，我说你把那个实验室就开了吧。他说明天过年，我我说对的呀，我说我说就是因为这个我才给你打电话呀。如果是一个新的病原体，人类没有经历过这样一个疾病，大家又对它都没有免疫力，它是广泛易感的，就每个人对它都易感。这是一个呼吸道传染病，那呼吸道会飞沫传染，飞机会带过去。我说传不住了怎么办？所以只有疫苗。Without a vaccine to slow the spread of this new coronavirus, our highly connected world could only watch as a new pandemic arrived on its doorstep. E a gente estava numa reunião administrativa e o pessoal comentou: Ah, será que vem essa pandemia até o Brasil? E um colega meu falou assim: A dúvida não é se vem, a dúvida é quando vem. E daí, depois de três, quatro meses, a pandemia estava batendo nas nossas portas. Naquele momento não tinha vacina. Todo mundo queria tomar vacina. My son, he asked me, what will happen if the virus come here? Are we going to school or not? I said, of course you will go to school. So yes, don't even think about not going to school. We immediately remembered the first SARS-CoV. That pandemic was limited to few countries and then it disappeared. So we were hoping we'll see the same scenario. A vaccine would have to block a single yet deadly cellular event. The virus bears a crown of spikes that can bind to a minuscule protein receptor on human cells known as ACE2. A vaccine would encourage white blood cells to produce matching antibodies to defend against this attack. But finding that antibody was an uncertain exercise. At an average cost of $100 million per attempt, failure would be a huge setback. China, with the largest population at risk, launched research into several different platforms at the same time.
The biggest fear was that we wouldn't be able to make a vaccine that was effective. And we spent a lot of time and energy. We'd hold back COVID potentially for months or even for years, waiting for vaccines to be available. And the worst case scenario was that vaccines were, were not going to be very effective. What kind of machine will be more effective, will be effective or more effective? Nobody knows. To find out if a vaccine would bring on protective antibodies, it would have to be tested repeatedly against the pathogen. This would be a dangerous and difficult task. In 2020, one highly specialized corner of bioscience would supply the answer. COVID is a zoonotic disease, deadly to animals as well as humans. For Qin Shuan's team of animal researchers, this was an opportunity as well as a challenge. So we every test, a mouse with a human-like ACE2 receptor can be tested to see if its tiny immune system will produce antibodies to protect it against infection. But the nation still didn't have a vaccine. China had turned to desperate mass actions to contain the virus's spread. Entire cities were mobilized. Now, speed would be everything. You know, China is a country with a huge population, yeah, 1.4 billion. The first, still the first in the world, maybe India is going to <laughs> catch up in the next year or next few years. Uh, to have a sound health system for a country like China is very important. It was one of nature's cruelest ironies. Urbanization had vastly improved global hygiene and sanitation. But this, in turn, had reduced our natural immunity to poliomyelitis, a crippling disease since ancient Egypt. In 1952, a massive outbreak of polio crippled hundreds of thousands of children. Jonas Salk made what is known as an inactivated vaccine a shot of weakened polio virus to encourage antibodies. Millions of children were inoculated, polio began to fade. From then on, inactivated vaccines were the standard tool to fight smallpox and many other diseases. You知道在一九八八年的时候，中国的上海因为吃毛蚶发生了三十几万人同时感染甲型肝炎，几乎一个城市是倒掉的。一个传染病到另一个传染病的距离就是一个飞机的航班距离呀，对吗？一个火车一
，叫做“久久为公”。就是正因为我们有了二零零三年非典以后那一次非常惨痛的教训。I think most important impact for China is SARS. Most of the top leaders now, at that time, they're working in different provinces. So I think that kind of thing is a good lesson. 它也让整个社会，也包括政治高层，呃，认识到公共卫生的和医疗服务体系，呃，它的重要性。非典的时候，我们很多疫苗企业都做了研究，嘎一下，没非典了，它所有前面的投入全部就已经没有了。就在二零二零年初，决定了做疫苗。选择什么样的技术路线，什么样的技术手段来做疫苗，其实是摆在中国科学家对面前的一个问题。为什么很难判定？一个是你要根据当初的、当时的疫情压力，你要根据这个疫苗安全性、有效性。那么最初决策的时候，我们无法判断哪个技术路线好，是灭活疫苗好，还是其他路径好？我们惊讶地发现。新冠病毒，它和原来的 SARS 病毒生物学性状极为相似。我们认为做灭活疫苗就是一个重要的可行方案。When SARS struck in 2003, a single inactivated vaccine made with weakened coronavirus had proven effective against the disease. As SARS faded, those studies were shelved. Now. As SARS-2 swept through society, vaccine makers rushed to reopen those files. You see, 21st century, after SARS, then is MERS, right? Then now is the new COVID. We have already the genetic profile of the human body. After the genetic analysis, we take the human body and make it into a human body. We cannot rely on luck to complete the work. We have to have a solid scientific base. 基础，因为灭活疫苗已经被证明是全球最安全，至今为止，包括美国小孩生下来两个月龄要打的 IPV 疫苗，仍然是野毒株生产的少可株生产的灭活疫苗。欧洲小孩全打了这个疫苗，他获得快速使用，就是应急紧急使用批准的这个审批的流程啊，审批的过程也相对要快。这个是一个非常经典的方法学，不是经典就是落后，经得住考验的就是最好的。With the decision to produce an inactivated vaccine against the virus, the next step would be the most complex and challenging. They must test their vaccine on human volunteers. The current culture of China, yeah, is that we need, you know, make ourselves. More prosperous, but also benefited the world as a whole. China is part of the world. China needed the world, and the world needs China. If a large enough number of individuals are vaccinated or have been previously infected by a pathogen. The chain of transmission throughout an entire population may slow. If enough places reach this herd immunity, then a disease may slowly die out. Long before COVID, new connections had been forming between emerging nations. This shuffling in the global order would have an outsized impact on the race for a vaccine. Dr. Nawal Al Kabi understands change. As a female doctor in the UAE, specializing in pediatric disease, she was well prepared for the role she was about to play. So um, I'm an Emirati, born and raised in UAE, married with four children. Why I went to medicine? Uh, because I love science. Initially, we're not sure if this is a local outbreak or this is something will turn into a multi-countries outbreak. At that time, we didn't think of pandemic. In early 2020, 
three very different platforms sought World Health Organization approval. Highly experimental messenger RNA delivers a targeted nucleic acid blueprint for antibodies. Viral vector enlists a modified version of one virus to produce antibodies against another. And inactivated vaccine, which uses a weakened version of the coronavirus itself to stimulate antibodies. But regardless of platform, every vaccine must pass a rigorous set of clinical trials to prove their effectiveness in humans. 安全性、绵源性的研究之后,剂量选择之后,要去做一个大规模的三级临床,三级安全性是什么意思?就是要把人呢,就是要在一个高发病的地区,把这个人群分成两部分,一部分打疫苗,一部分不打疫苗。We accelerated all of that for COVID-19 into the space of about a year by kind of overlapping the study. So you start the phase one study, but you already begin preparations for the phase two. 你在做一二结果到五月份的时候我们就看到从四月下旬开始咱们整个中国的新冠疫情控制很好这个时候出现新问题了The Chinese government actually controlled the pandemic situation and to conduct the clinical trial phase 3 of Sinopharm vaccine you need to be in the pandemic situation to test or to check the efficacy of the vaccine with a slowing infection rate, Sinopharm must search for countries to help run clinical trials. In 2020, of the 11 places they found, the UAE boasted one of the most diverse populations in the region. If you go back to the history of the UAE, you will find that uh, it is rooted in trade and connections as a midpoint between the East and the West. There is a balance between tradition and modernity, which I think is also reflected in the Chinese culture. The challenge was, was equitable distribution of vaccines, not only to the higher income countries, but also to the rest of the world. So it was an attractive option to get Chinese vaccines into their countries more quickly, and those vaccines worked. This is for us the first time to conduct a trial uh, where we have to recruit thousands of volunteers and I thought we'll face some challenge, but it was the opposite. We recruited a total of 44,000. Uh, our volunteers, they are coming from 125 nationalities. So conducting a trial in UAE will give you a good uh, mix of different ethnic uh, groups. Sinopharm's vaccine would be the first Chinese inoculation to obtain WHO's emergency use authorization with an efficacy of 86%. The trials also revealed another advantage of inactivated vaccines. People tend to trust the traditional method. And this is what we've noticed here in UAE. We have one of the highest vaccination rate. I think uh, we learned a hard license from uh, fighting the pandemic. And uh, you can see wherever there is a better collaboration among the countries and they reach the better result. Because science uh, should be able to benefit society only when the public understands the science. You have to educate the people. You have to let them to know what 
means a vaccine for infectious diseases. The safety, the efficacy, eventually also the adverse effects. As spring of 2021 approached, communities all over the planet struggled helplessly against the pandemic. One such place, a tiny corner of Brazil's sugarcane growing region, was to play a surprisingly vital role in the proving of a new vaccine. Serrana é uma cidade pequena, muito cercada por fazendas e bois, vamos dizer assim. Um terço da população viaja todos os dias para trabalhar. E essa viagem para uma cidade vai para outra, isso aumenta muito a transmissão de doenças infecto contagiosas. Oh, lá na, na usina, o meu trabalho era trabalhar com a, a cana. A principal é. matéria-prima da usina é a cana de açúcar, né? Mas no começo você foi para a destilaria, né? Foi o de usina é, inteira. Para a destilaria, sacarose. Saí no início da pandemia, que foi quando começaram a demitir o pessoal por conta da, do, do Covid e tudo mais. E, e afetou a família toda, hein? A família ah, toda. A família toda. O Brasil é um país continental. Country. We go from deserts to the Amazon forests, to volcanic areas, to our huge coastline. All of this adds challenges, but also it adds a genetic diversity. That diversity is studied at the nation's premier biomedical facility, the 120-year-old Butan Tan Institute in Sao Paulo. Butan Tan, known for its research of venomous reptiles, is also the largest producer of vaccines in South America. The Institute will run phase three clinical trials for China's Sinovac. The deal is mutually important. In January or February 2021, is, if you look at the data uh, from that period, Brazil already become the number two or number three for the COVID. There is every day 100,000, even more, cases. Aqui em Serrana, é, parecia cenário de guerra. Não tinha ninguém na rua. Uma alma, assim, você não via nem cachorro na rua, você não via, sabe? Tipo, tava, um deserto. Tava um deserto, assim. Foi desesperador quando eu vi aquele cenário. So, when we announced we will do the face ratio in Brazil, some local Brazil people saying that, I will lay, lay down in the, <laughs> outside of Butantan to get the shot. A three-month trial in Brazil will coincide with others in Indonesia and Turkey. The test subjects will be 10,000 frontline healthcare workers. But with Brazilian hospitals overrun with sick people, this choice would prove fateful. Eu acho na verdade o pessoal, o pessoal eles politizaram. Quando você politiza a ciência, é, é um problema. Com fake news, com mensagens falsas, verdadeiras. Então isso torna um desafio maior ainda. Daí na cabeça da pessoa, da população leiga, isso é uma loucura. Misinformation, disinformation, tá trazendo de que há muitos de, de que ouvidão, se de uns que não querem se vacinar. Vai ser tipo um rato de laboratório, né? <risos> tipo, vai ser os primeiros que pode acontecer. Não sabia que podia acontecer. Então, o que nós fazemos em Bahia, em Turquia, em Indonésia, em Bahia, é muito diferente. Bahia é muito diferente, Bahia é muito diferente. Mas, como você avalia se esse vacino é bom ou não? Pressed by the need for a vaccine, the Bhutan Tan Institute offered an innovative and controversial solution. So, our partner in the Bhutan Tan Institute, he gave me a suggestion. He said, this way, you give us a vaccine, we give us a vaccine. We're going to find a small city in Bhutan, and all the people in Bhutan, 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 all the
90% 90% Bhutan Tan's idea was to take the vaccine out of a laboratory setting and prove its value in the real world. They chose Serana, a remote commuter town of 45,000, where COVID was raging out of control. The plan is codenamed Project S. The idea S, the Project S, comes from Segredo, comes from Serrana, comes from São Paulo, and comes from Sinovac. So, but the principal of it is the work in secret, in secret, for people to not migrate here. When we had the idea to develop this study in Serrana, most of the population wasn't yet eligible for taking the vaccine within the national program of immunization. Naquele momento não tinha vacina. Todo mundo queria tomar a vacina. A ideia principal é avaliar como que a vacina funciona no mundo real. Vai reduzir caso grave, mortalidade mesmo? Vai reduzir a transmissão? Qual o percentual que eu tenho que vacinar para ter imunidade de rebanho? Então você tem um cenário, é a Serrana virou um laboratório a céu aberto. For Serrana's real world study, the residents could come and go as they please. And by vaccinating alternate parts of the city at the same time, the researchers would get a better read on how well the vaccine is actually working. O que a gente observou? Quando a gente vacinou a cidade inteira, a gente teve uma redução de casos sintomáticos de 80% e uma redução de internação e mortalidade de aproximadamente 95%. The data that we collect in Serrana was very important because it shows now how effective the CoronaVac vaccine is to prevent severe cases. E um dado muito interessante, a gente observou, a gente atingiu a imunidade de rebanho. A vacinação ela é um ato coletivo, mas tem. Se a gente vacina uma porcentagem significativa, mesmo as pessoas não vacinadas vão se proteger pela vacinação. Isso é o lado bonito da vacinação. E hoje? Hoje está tranquilo. Está <risos> mais melhor. Acredita então na vacina hoje? Ah, agora acredito. A human being is facing so many challenges. This world, you know, I remember at the very beginning of the outbreak, President Xi Jinping uh, pledged that uh, if China can succeed in the R&D of the vaccine, then it will serve as the public goods for the international society. Tai 所以说我们在But today, even after billions of shots, the target itself is changing. Vaccines were designed to encourage white blood cells known as B cells to produce neutralizing antibodies. The virus is mutating to find ways to dodge this defense. So the vaccines were typically designed against the original COVID virus and the virus has changed. They're still very effective in preventing severe disease, even with the latest Omicron subvariants, but uh, they're not as good at protecting against infection. So there's a little bit of a mismatch.
new studies are examining a less researched component of our immune system. T cells are known to recognize and attack parts of the pathogen that don't mutate quite as rapidly. T cells are like the cleanup merchants in our immune system. They identify infected cells, um, kill those cells before they can produce lots of the virus. And so they play an important role, particularly in modulating disease severity. Uh, if you get infected, if you've got a better level of, of T cell immunity against that infection, you should be able to recover more quickly. Dr. Ben Cowling and his colleagues at Hong Kong University have drawn interesting conclusions about our most widely distributed vaccines. Months after inoculation, both inactivated and mRNA vaccines provide as much as 98% protection against serious disease and hospitalization. And inactivated vaccines may be encouraging as many or even more killer T cells than other more advanced platforms. A better understanding of our immune systems will lead to more effective vaccines in the future. But even then, it still comes down to distribution. And that's where China can help. And if half of the vaccines administered around the world are inactivated vaccines, that's a starting point for saying that Chinese vaccines have most likely saved billions of lives. Shuai 你想想我们送去的不仅仅是疫苗是信心这样的疫苗在人类就是一百年左右的历史但是我们整个的传染病那是几千年的历史了我跟你说几个数据吧就是说你比如说我们现在全人类的话我们叫消灭天花天花靠
It's a drive to enlist the very old and the very young to a growing sense of communal immunity that only vaccines provide. A generation vax. Now I have uh, even uh, probably 40 to 50 vaccines still on the way, not just limited on the mRNA machine. So this is something different because usually we would like to follow. And now, no, we try to create by ourselves. You can say that's fake. Trying if you have the belief that a human body is the biggest treasure of, for any individual, I would say uh, gradually more and more people will accept the idea of taking a vaccine not only for COVID-19, but even for flu, for anything. That will help you to prevent the diseases. This is why we say 21st century is a, is a century for life science or biotech. 我们历次的传染病都告诉我们，动物的健康关系到人的健康，人的健康也跟动物健康相关联，人要爱护这个地球。同一世界，同一健康，这个是特别对的。We have to consider a concept called One Health. If you discover a virus among the animals, there's always a risk that it could jump to human, and unless you discover it early and avoid that jump, you might not be able to control when the virus moves from one species to another. And the best way to do that, in my humble opinion, is sharing data early on, collaboration, learn from each other. Because, uh, yes, human being should be considered as a, as a community. Uh in terms of the development, in terms of the peace, uh, in terms of the control and prevention of the infectious diseases, including the dealing with big issues like uh, climate change, yeah, like uh, food, yeah, which benefit not only Chinese people, but uh, people beyond China, because China is part of the world. China needs the world, and the world needs China.